Hey guys, still there. Let's say you're in the market for a premium vehicle, but you don't really want to dish out as much as you would on an MBT-70. In that case, a T92 light tank at tier 2 could be a useful investment. Now, this tank, as you can see, um, it's pretty lowish, which makes it difficult to hit target. It is going to be very, very fast. It does make a decent amount of credits, although keep in mind it's no tier 6 main battle tank at premium. So it won't be making as much credits. Still, you won't be paying nearly as much on that, since um, I think you can get this tank for about 900, but it's been a while since I bought it. So, this review is mainly going to focus on the specs and not really so much the price. Now, talking of the specs, I'm going to call up the specs of the T92 itself, as well as those of the M41. Because the M41 is the only other light tank at this tier. And you can see some differences between these things. Of course the first similarity is that they're both a light tank, they both get the engine override and they are both pretty damn efficient at firing on the move. That is, so long as you're moving forwards or backwards and not moving the turret around. Um, now that I'm looking at it, the cost for this tank is 650 gold, which is really, really moderate. Now as far as the stats go for damage done, um, your damage done on the T92 is a bit higher. Same goes for your DPM, but your penetration is a bit lower. This means that at this tier you will have a bit of difficulty penetrating the uh, frontal sides of the tanks. But so long as you take the rear or the sides of the tanks so go for the flanks, you have a pretty good shot. And of course there aren't really that many main battle tanks yet at this tier. The one thing that you could encounter, and I have it up behind me here, is a T-54. I'm not too worried about that one. It's not really that difficult to penetrate or flank. Now, as far as the armor goes, um, that's something that most light tanks, until you get up to way higher in the tier, so say about tier 6 or tier 7, that's when they start to actually get a bit of armor. This thing, um, as well as the M41, is very, very vulnerable to autocannon fire. Anything will go through this tank, as you only have steel armor, which does not get any kind of modifier, and same goes for the turret. If you can only expose your turret because 32 is still a little harder to penetrate than 13 but really against an autocannon it won't make that much of a difference. As far as mobility goes this is a very very important element for a light tank. Light tanks don't charge head on they find a flank and abuse it. That's the best way to play these things. Now the maximum speed of this one is 76 and a half compare that to the 72 of the M41 you can see that the M41 is a bit um, slower in its top speed but it accelerates faster which is um, not really what I would be expecting for a light tank that looks a little heavier than the T92. View range though is in the advantage of the T92 or sorry camo range is in the advantage of the T92 but view range is a bit inferior. You're looking at 385 versus 423. But then again, you're a light tank. You're not really a spotter. Although, um, some people will accuse you of being a spotter and not telling you not to do your or that you're not doing your job. The thing is, this thing is not the best spotter at this tier. Compare it, for example, to uh, the LAV 150. This thing had a spotting range of 467. There's really no way that you're going to be competing in spotting range with an LAV-150, so don't bother. Gun depression on this thing is nice, at minus 9 degrees. Of course, M41 is slightly better, but um, this one is something that's going to be sticking with you. So, um, constantly having that minus 9 degrees is, as far as I'm concerned, pretty nice for a premium tank like this. Targeting time is in the advantage of the T92. Accuracy spread, T92 advantage, uh, reload time, T92. And I do believe I have some retrofits that help with this, but you could easily play it without and do a couple games. Have the tank by itself, as it were, a couple of retrofits. Now, that's as far as the stats go. What you need to know about this thing is it has little to no armor. It is pretty fast, but takes a little bit of time to get rolling, a little lower than, or a little longer than you would expect for a light tank. View range isn't that good, but camo is decent. Now as far as the ammunition goes in T92, I have it pretty much loaded out with most heat rounds and a few armor penetration. I don't really 
need anything else but heat, especially at tier 2, which is what this tank is mostly going to be seeing. If I do really find myself up against a target which is just impossible to penetrate from the front with heat, and really this thing has 129 millimeters of penetration, there aren't that many vehicles which are going to be significantly difficult to penetrate. But let's say I come up against one, that's when you fire APBC, armor piercing ballistic capped. And your penetration goes up from uh, 129 to 146, but your damage drops to 158 from 198. So you're going to be sacrificing damage for penetration, as always. As far as my retrofits go, I went with experimental propellant to make sure I get a bit more punch out of this gun. And the improved filter systems are going to boost my maximum speed a little bit. Of course, you can th um, throw in whatever you like here. This is, though, a firepower retrofit slot, and this is a mobility retrofit slot. That's the only ones you get. You don't get any others. Consumables, um, as usual, I have all of my passive mo uh, bonuses and one low-tier field maintenance kit. For the commander, I went with Anthony Diaz, mostly because I'm training up this guy. Um, this premium vehicle is going to stay with me forever, and so will this crew. So for that reason I went with Anthony Diaz because that gives me better crew experience, so better crew training. And the faster I can get more crew skills on this thing, the better it's going to perform. Alright, that's it for the review of the tank. Let's actually see how this thing performs in battle. We're going to do one PvP and one PvE as usual, so you can see exactly how this thing performs. Okay, we're on River Point, and this match is pretty much a tier 3 game. There's a lot of tier 3s on the enemy team, as well as on my team. Actually, there's just 4, never mind. Um, don't be dismayed if you see these tier 3s, because a Scorpion is easy to penetrate. An XM800, my heat's gonna go right through. Object 155 is easy to penetrate from the sides, and the T62, same deal. The rest of them, T-54s, flank these targets, the LAVs, PT-76 and the M113s are very, very easy to penetrate. Now my first order of business is to provide a bit of fire support. And um, I'm going to first see where my team is going, but I'm aiming to provide fire support on the right flank. Now, as I'm accelerating, note that this thing does take a bit of time to get rolling. Um, not really what you would expect from a light tank. But this is just the way that the thing works. It's not the fastest. But once you actually get rolling, you can see I'm doing 62, 65, we're still accelerating, 75, and then I have to start making a turn. We, whoa, 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 Jesus, why would you suddenly stop there like that? I'm going to sit here in the bushes behind the line here to make sure that my heat rounds can be fired from relative safety and the moment that they uh, mess up that they see that there aren't that many tanks there I'm going to start rushing in and this is something that I found works pretty well when using light tanks you have to be a bit patient and wait for the opening to arrive once it's there this thing can really really capitalize on that and you can start outputting the damage that you want to Now we already lost our 113, he charged in a bit too aggressively, I think, on the 6 line. It seems that there's nothing here, so we're going to move up. You can see that going over those rails actually slows me down a little bit. Charging ahead of T-54 is not always the best option, but I think that there just aren't that many units around, if any, which of course is a bit unusual. Whoa, whoa, talking to units. Put a read into the ground into him and get the hell out of here, because that was an autocannon that started firing back at me. I could and should have popped my... Um, ex improved acceleration there, but I forgot about it. Why there's three camping main battle tanks is beyond me, but it's probably...
probably because these guys are just getting into the game. And spot it. I didn't spot him though. Somebody else did the spotting. Probably the T-54 up front there. Oh, and we got one T-54 coming down the hill. No pen. Tried to penetrate his sides, didn't go through. Now he's showing a beautiful oh, side angle. And I tracked him. Wonderful. Still, that's going to help me with XP. No effect. I switched to AP rounds now, because I've had it with this guy. By the time my shell's loaded, he's going to be dead. There you go. Only 11 damage done to him. But my tracking damage did help. Now, I don't think that I'm going to be useful here because I'm stuck. I don't want to start um, provoking those main battle tanks up that hill. So I'm going to pop my acceleration, get the hell out of here, and find a different flank to work. Sometimes you just have to relocate. And of course, with this ridge line and the highway to the right of it, it's going to be a bit of a drive around. It seems that the left flank is being pushed quite heavily. So I'm going to relocate towards the left flank and try and give a bit of fire support there. And back to my heat rounds because most of the tanks there are quite easy to penetrate. And I'm going to sit close to the cap because from there you got a bit of terrain elevation. And the terrain elevation is what I'm going to need in order to hit those targets without getting myself into too much trouble. Usually this is a pretty good forward position, but I'm not sure how far forward these guys have come. They've come a bit too far forward. No effect. No effect. Let's go to AP. Come on. Oh, of course. Now you show your heart. This Patton has to go before he starts causing serious damage to my ally. Come on. Damn it. No pen. I haven't spotted, though. T-54 coming down the hill there. Bounced off. You can see that AP at specific angles like the ones that I'm using right now are not great. This thing will suffer from penetration issues every now and again. Not sure where that round went. It should have gone right through. Returning fire and I think that by now I'm the only tank here. So reversing. With the acceleration, I'm doing 30 in reverse. Still being spotted with the F41 there. <coughs> Return fire. I need to find a bit of cover because I'm taking way too much damage here without being very effective. I did hit my engine, but I really don't want to pop my repair unit. Come on. Hit him. Identify. Hostile tank. Fire. Pull back. It's gonna return fire. That was a bit of a non-shot. <coughs> I could take out that 155 there, but there's way too many tanks there already. By the time that I get there, he's probably gonna be dead. This is pretty much the way that I look at a light tank, by the way. I'm trying to find and isolate lone targets. And by doing that, you have the best... Whoops, that's autocannon fire from the lab. By doing that, you have the best chance of actually knocking out vehicles. This is what I was worried about. The lab is going to outspot me. Looking at a similar spread in tanks. 8-8. See that with my damage engine, this thing performs even worse than normally. Those guys that I left at the highway are still all the way out there. I think I'm going to have to switch from being a light tank to a tank destroyer. Find a good sniping spot. Of course, I don't get the sniping bonus, but it does help me if I can take out some more tanks here. I'm sticking close to terrain cover. What I really need here is a spotter, and the XM800 would be ideal for that. There's T54. I cannot really go out and hit the T54 reliably. 
There's the lav. Come on. Just park somewhere. I'll make it quick. Switching to heat. Easy target. Easy to penetrate. No shot on the scorpion. No, sh no shot on the second LEV there, but somebody else does. Round in. 230 damage. He's done. There's still the issue with the M41 back. Now, loading AP and going for the object 155. My problem is I have to fire twice if I cannot get a good side shot on this guy. Because my damage output is, unless it's a really high damage roll, not going to be enough to kill this guy. And he's just beyond that building. I'm going to have to use my acceleration buff here in order to Identify. get out after I fire the shot. Come on. Oh, crap. He's looking right at me. Acceleration buff doesn't really do that much anymore. Because my engine is pretty far gone. Wow. Full health T62 moving up. That could be troubling. That could be really troubling. If we bunch up together, we have a pretty good chance of actually surviving. Oh, look at that. Side shot, 262. Right between the buildings. Let's see if I can do that again. Ooh. He knows I'm here, but it's going to be a really difficult shot for him. What's he doing? He knows that he's being spotted. He's not tracked. I will take you out if you sit there. Crap. This could very well be the end of me. Come on. Okay, I'm gonna pop my repair kit because I can still salvage this game. But I'm gonna have to be clever about it. I'm gonna need the capacity that this tank can give me. So I need my engine back online, and yes, that will cost me about 17,500 credits. But it is worth it. Because if I win this, I get a lot more credits in return. Let's see if I can help out the T-54 there in dealing with the Scorpion. If it's still there. I've been spotted. Ooh, Scorpion's in town. I've been spotted, so if I reverse now, he's going to pretty much one-shot me. Back, pop back, pop back, come on, where are you? Where are you? Screw it, I'm out of here. Whoops. Let's try not to drown this tank. <coughs> By the way, I've already done about 2,000 points of damage, which for a tier 2 is a very, very significant number. Now, it's going to be a battle of spotting ranges. The Scorpion has a pretty decent spotting range. My <coughs> vehicle does not really have that good of a spotting range, so I'm going to be fighting his camo range, or his camo factor. And I think that that might be the T-54. I'm not sure if they're expecting... Okay, it's not the Scorpion. The Scorpion's probably going to kill off the T-54. I'm not sure if I can one-shot this thing. To find a good lookout. And I'm not sure where they're expecting me from, so I'm not sure where their guns are going to be aiming. Come on. Spot the cap. Spot the cap. Hello. Target destroyed. Target destroyed. That was the biggest threat that they really had, that tier uh, 3 T-62. The Scorpion is going to be my next worry. And the T-54... Nah, he's not that big of a threat. Oh, 
Scorpion spotted. T-54 spotted. Missed. Damn it, he's going into the terrain depth there. Gotta find that Scorpion before it finds me. He's gonna be moving towards the cap. We only got two minutes left. And the cap, if I don't join it, is three minutes. Damn it. Alright. Just do what I just did, do it again. The thing is, this thing is pretty much full health. Which will make it a bit more difficult, but he's not gonna cap in time anyways. Still, any and all damage is welcome. Actually, there might be two tanks in there now. Wouldn't be surprised if there were. Come on. Surprise. He's gonna swing his turret around. Missed? How did that miss? Come on. Hit. Reset the cap. Okay. I already hit that guy. So... <coughs> That means the scorpion's coming this way. I'm not sticking around to find out if he is. I'm gonna get the hell out of here. There's T-54, who abandoned the cap. Or it's close to. Lost vision on him. Ooh, scorpion's threatening my T-54. Can I snipe that thing from out here? That'd be really useful for my ally. Come on. He left the cap. I think it's gonna be a draw anyway, but still. Come on, come on. Come up. It's just too far down. I need this guy to uh, pull back. Damn it, draw. Okay. Alright, it's a bit unfortunate that was a draw. Still, I got 114,000 credits, and that is with a... Sorry, without the 1.25 modifier, because I didn't win. So, um, net, that gives me, uh, of course, the spare parts for 17,500. I still made a 94,000 profit, which for a tier 2 light tank premium is really, really nice. As far as teams go... Um, with the risk of sounding arrogantly, um, I wasn't expecting anything else. With two and a half thousand damage, you're going to be way above most of your team members. And of course, I did spot quite a few targets. So, this is how the T92 performs in PvP. PvE is a bit of a different matter, because you're going to have units spawning all around you, and I found that this tank doesn't really perform that well there. Before I'm going to go in there, I'm going to adjust some crew members. Uh, we're going to go with Smooth Ride, because I'm going to be firing on the move. I'm going to have uh, Quick Draw. Aim speed is always welcome. And let's see, Reload Time Improved. There. Okay, let's take it into PvE. I can only do the easy contracts, unfortunately, which means that you're going to be um, usually not getting that much of a bonus. However, you do get the daily rewards, and that's of course welcome. This is another 47,000 that's pretty much for free the moment that we complete this PvE mission. Alright, PvE mission. Operation Tsunami, which is, I suppose you could say, pretty accurately named when I'm driving a light tank. Of course, it's not quite as fast as an AFV, but you can still pretty much tornado around the battlefield. I have to destroy, sort of download some SETCOM trucks and capture the port. Now this thing for a T92 is a pretty decent situation because I have quite a bit of terrain cover that I can use to make sure I am safe. Loader. Or safe ish. Alright, Black Company. We have a cocktail port to capture. Hope it's not another human traffic like last time. You ready? Black Company, new objective. There might be crucial intel stored in those cartel satellites. I usually head left because there's quite a bit of up and down terrain here that I can hide behind. I think an M113 there already got taken out. Yep, yeah, he's dead. There's another one. Come on. Spawning all around. 
Heat round. Took a return heat round for, or a return AP round from that PT-76. I think I'm out of it. This thing can really hit from this range. Down. Hit right through the turret. Bit of a snapshot there, but I think. See, with the gun depression, I'm maximizing the gun depression right now. It's almost clipping through the tank. That's how f low you can bring this gun. Six. This guy's not returning fire, which I'm very, very happy about. Oh, hello. I haven't seen you there. Lower frontal plate of a T92 is going to return fire. Yeah. Extended A, shot into him, and get out. I do not want to stick around. Patton. No good frontal shot. Maybe on the turret somewhere. Yep, keep turning, keep turning, keep turning. Good man. You can turn the other way, works for me. Right, there you go. T-54 took him out. 1300, which puts me in second place after the LAV-150. Okay, let's capture the SETCOM truck. This is something that, in a light tank, you will be expected to do, by the way. You're nice fast, job, of course company. you're no LAV, but you're still fast enough to quickly make it in and out of secondary objectives. So if you can help your team out that way, and yourself of course, because you get more XP, if you get the secondary objectives as well, do so. Go for it. Tank. I'm 60 behind me, but I'm not too concerned about it. Just want to get the secondary and be out. Oh, hello. He missed. I know I ignored the cap circle there, but I want to get this guy dead first. Then I can capture this thing in peace rather than capture it in pieces. Like Alright, secondary is done. Keep in mind, with these you capture know, objectives, usually the moment you hit the cap means. circle, more units are going to spawn. This is something that most people don't seem to be aware of. Whoops, yet. That was a close miss on this part. Um, if not every tank is near the cap circle, if you're very spread out, it's not always the best choice to start capping. Because you're going to spawn in new bots. So that's definitely something that you need to be aware of. Apologies there. And we captured it. All right, pretty good game. Mission pretty fast. All right, this is the result screen, and as you can see, I didn't get nearly as many credits in this game mode as I did in PvP. As far as um, XP goes, let's see. This was uh, where's the other one? The first one, which was a draw, I got 1900 XP for, but I did significantly better. This one was a win, and I got 1500 XP. So, for me, with my playstyle, I usually get a lot more credits and XP if I'm going into PvP with a premium tank. If you want to just try out this thing, get used to it, then PvE is definitely a good way to do that. As far as details go, um, total net with premium because you don't have to spend anything on repairs and ammunition is 30,000 credits. So I got little under one-fourth, or little over one-fourth of the credits that I got from the PvE match. Uh, the PvP match, the one where I got 120. Anyway, um, for a 650 gold premium tank at tier 2, I think it's pretty nice. Don't expect this thing to uh, win one-on-one -on -one fights, at least not against full health targets, because unless you have some really good terrain you can hide behind, it is difficult to pull that off. 
Other than that, for the price, this thing can make quite a bit of credits, and if you don't want to spend too much money on the game, then this one is definitely a good choice. If you do want to spend more money on the game, and you want to get credits faster, I would recommend going with, and I have to scroll all the way through my garage, I recommend going with an MBT70, which I've covered in a different replay, and the link to that is in the video, in the description down below. Anyway, hope you found this review useful. Um, I really like the T92. I think it's a nice little addition to my garage if I'm playing with people who don't have very high tiers yet. So, let me know what you think of the tank. If you have it, if you use it, if you're going to get it. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing what you think about it in the comments. For now, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.